Hey guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and today I'm going to talk to you about diabetes drugs and cancer. Of course, I cross out the cancer because I don't want you to get it. So, a lot of people have questions about diabetes drugs and cancer. The first question that comes to me when I try to prescribe medication, does that cause cancer? And my answer to this is uh, yes and no. All right, so I'll tell you why it is yes and no, uh, and, and mostly no, but I'll tell you when you need to avoid a certain medication for your personal case. So stay tuned, let's get into the video now. All right, diabetes drugs. So we have a lot of drugs to cover up today. So I'm going to classify these drugs and you will easily identify what you are on. So we have common drugs. What are they? Metformin. So that drug is commonly questioned about cancer, right? We're going to go over that. What other drugs are there? Sulfonylureas. I'm going to call them sulfa. It's the name is too long and to write it down. So these are glipizide, glimepiride, anything that starts with gli, GLI, okay? If you have a drug that starts with GLI, that is sulfonylurea, I call them sulfa, okay? And the third class is GLP-1 class. This class has been very, very popular recently, and there is a lot of questions about these drugs. What are they? Ozempic, Trulicity, Bidurian, Bieta, Victoza. These are your drugs, okay? Ozempic, Trulicity, etc., etc. So, you just heard. So, all right, so the next one is SGLT2 inhibitors. These are the medications that make you pee the sugar. What are they? Invocana, in, Invocana, Farsiga, uh, Jardians, and Steglatra. All right, for a second I had a uh, uh, brain pause. <laughs> all right, so. These are the main medications. Now, of course, we have insulins, right? Insulin, I hate it. I hate insulin. Insulin is like a, uh, typically what we call is like a necessary evil. Sometimes we have to do it, but most of the time, I try to avoid insulin. I try to get people off the insulin because if anything, insulin is the real deal here when it comes to cancer. And we'll talk about that right now. All right, so let's start with metformin. Now guys, I'm gonna make it easy and sweet for you. I'm not gonna like, you know, take your time too much here. Metformin does not cause cancer, period. Metformin actually reduces cancer, guys. Please remember that. Metformin reduces cancer. This has been studied 100 times because studies show consistently patients with diabetes who are on metformin are much, much less likely to die from cancer compared to patients who refuse to take metformin or patients who cannot take metformin for one or the other reason. Those people end up with more cancers, okay? Remember that. This has been studied so many times. Recently, there was a recall because some of the companies actually didn't do a good job. They contaminated metformin with something uh, and that was potentially carcinogenic. And FDA, thank God, is toughest, one of the toughest regulators in the world, FDA in the United States. That's why any drug in the world comes to the United States last. Even if it is produced in the United States, it will be approved in Europe first before that it gets approved in, F in the United States because FDA has very strict regulations, uh, unless somebody interferes, like a president. But uh, other than that, you know, it's very good. Uh, so. Sulfonylureas, glipizide, glimepiride, uh, glucoside, whatever, the, in some countries are different names. Uh, glimepiride, glyburide, and glipizide is the most common ones in the United States. Now, I'll tell you a secret here. There is no study to say that the glipizide actually causes cancer. Uh, but, the, but the thing is this. Um, anything that increases your insulin in your body. And there are a lot of studies that says excessive insulin is the main reason for cancer because insulin is a growth factor, okay? If you didn't know that, you, will, you can ask around. 
a lot of people actually, especially bodybuilders, will even abuse insulin to build muscle. The insulin is a builder. If you work out, you will build muscle, and if you eat you know, a lot of protein and sugar, etc., because it's an anabolic hormone. If you're not an athletic person, you will build fat. Yeah, you will build something. If it is not muscle, it's gonna be a fat. So, insulin makes things grow. As a result, people with insulin resistance, even if they're not diabetic, with high insulin levels, they are going to end up having more, much more cancer. It's been proven 100 times. People with insulin resistance end up with much more cancer. And the reason for that is the excessive insulin levels. Now, salfonylias increase your insulin level all the time. It's a problem. You need insulin only at certain times. Of course, you need a, a small basal insulin, but you need a big junk of insulin when you eat, and after two hours, you don't need it anymore. With the salfonylias, your insulin levels go up and stay up. That's a problem. Taking insulin is the same way. I'm gonna jump to insulin because we're talking about insulin here. Taking insulin is the same way. Now, the thing is, now the question is, well, if the insulin causes cancer, should I not take the insulin? Well, insulin does not directly cause cancer, okay? So what insulin does, insulin just makes things grow. So if you already have a cancer trying to grow in your body, insulin will just make it easier. Now, on the other hand, if you don't take insulin, you are not going to be in a good position if you have to take insulin, but you don't, then you're gonna probably end up with complications and die way sooner than having a cancer. You see what I'm saying here? So not taking insulin is not the solution. The solution is taking less insulin or trying to stop insulin while keeping your blood sugars regulated. So you cannot just let your blood sugar go high and stop insulin for being fearful of cancer and then, you know, then your blood sugars are high, so you didn't win anything, you're still losing. So try to reduce your insulin resistance, that's the key. That's why I don't like the sulfur drugs because they do not help your insulin resistance. Now, GLP-1 and SGLT-2 drugs are good drugs. By the way, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention the pioglucosone. It's not popular anymore, but a lot of people are still using it because it's, it's inexpensive and it's commonly available. Pioglutazone, pioglutazone is another, I call this pio, it's, it's, a, it's a long name, so just call it pio, make it easy. Uh, pioglutazone is also another drug uh, that actually is very good for uh, to reduce the risk of cancer, which will touch, touch, have a touch base. But uh, GLP-1 and SGLT-2 drugs uh, are the two, uh, two class. GLP-1, remember, the ozempic, trulicity, or uh, victoza, rebelsis. Uh, rebelsis is actually the, the, the latest addition, with, which is the oral form of ozempic, which is wonderful because people used to shy away from injections, but now we have a pill for it. So GLP-1, the pill form is rebelsis, and there's a bunch of other injections. And the GLP-1 class will make you lose weight, will reduce your insulin resistance, all this good stuff. But on the label, on these drugs, on any drugs, it could be Ozempic, Rebelsis, Trulicity, whatever it is, you will see that they will say, oh, you know, the rats had cancer. The question is, are you a rat or not? That's the question. If you're ratting on people, you may get cancer. I'm just kidding. All right, so... The thing is, rats are different animals, okay? We are thinking animals, yes, we are. But the rats are very different. So, the rats have receptors that are different than us, okay? And um, especially for medullary thyroid cancer, which is super rare thyroid cancer, and pancreatic cancer, uh, which is also a rare, although it's deadly, but it's super rare cancer. Um, now, in human studies, on tens of thousands of people, we do not have a signal to say that any of this GLP-1 class, any of these medications, again, I'm talking about the whole entire class. Don't think that I'm getting paid or something here. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about the entire class. These class all have the same indication or label or warning, I would say warning. And the only time we don't give these medications to certain patients, if they have a family history of pancreatic cancer or medullary thyroid cancer, not every thyroid cancer, people get confused about this. There's a bunch of different thyroid cancers. Medullary thyroid cancer is only 3% of the entire thyroid cancer family. So it's extremely rare. And it's not, it's very different than the rest of the thyroid cancers. So if you have family history of pancreatic cancer or medullary thyroid cancer, I do not give it to patients, even if they are asking for it. 
And the reason for that is liability. I don't think they cause cancer, but guess what? I am not gonna get sued for something stupid like this, and I am not going to give it to you, I'm sorry. And it is in there, it says somebody has a family history of it, don't use it, and maybe there's something, maybe if you're really prone to it, like, you know, rats are prone to it, but if you're a human being who is also prone to it due to family history, then you're not gonna get it. Uh, so, uh, that is one thing with GLP-1, so if you, as long as you don't have that family history, I am very comfortable to give this to anybody in my family. I love these drugs. Uh, in my opinion, Ozempic and Rubelthus is the best, but, um, you know, all, all, the whole, the whole medications in that class is good. SGLs do inhibitors. Anything like Farsiga, Jardians, uh, Invokana, Astaglatra. These medications also can reduce your insulin resistance, can help you lose weight and uh, it reduces your insulin level overall. So as a result, I think they will help. Now, you may ask, you know, if you're urinating excessive blood sugar due to these drugs, can that cause cancer like a bladder cancer? The answer is no, and here's why. There is actually a genetic mutation in, in some people where they cannot really hold glucose and they end up urinating glucose, and that's a defect. Normally, normal people reabsorb glucose from their kidneys, but some people cannot, and, and there's a defect in their system. But they never get uh, bladder cancer or anything like that in those people who have defective um, mutation. So as a result, SGLT2 creates the defect, you know, uh, medically. And as a result, I don't expect any cancer from this. And we do not have any indication in animals or humans uh, either. Pyoglutazone is another medication that works similar to metformin. It makes your body more sensitive to insulin. So as a result, you will have less insulin in your body. As a result, you will have less cancer incidence.